uh, we try to think of better ways how to sell our DSL. Uh, basically, we think that there is a big problem, and the problem is as follows. RGSL is advertising to the wrong media and social networks, and in such a way it is appealing to the wrong target group, wrong target audience. Uh, you might say, oh wow, well you guys are smart asses, how about some proof? So what we did is we conducted, uh, we also, we, first of all we obtained data from RGSL about their previous marketing campaign. And then we made a survey ourselves, it is lots of geeky statistical numbers and we all know how you love them. So I will shortly uh, tell you a little bit about it. 87 people participated, and uh, what we found out is that um, people hear about RGSL mostly from friends or relatives or RGSL students. So word of mouth completely topped up the list in advertising. Not one of you had heard about RGSL from radio advertisements. So in our opinion, um, it is money wasted. We really shouldn't be advertising on radio. We instead should be pushing on the internet and get people talking about us. The next question we asked was, which radio stations do you listen to? And here, uh, European Hit Radio and Radio 101 dominated. Um, but again, the question was useless. We had no idea that you guys don't even listen to the radio campaigns. We asked about which internet portals do you read? And uh, Tevinet and Delphi took the first two places. In the last campaign in March from July, um, RGSL advertised in Apollo. Apollo was third in our list, followed by quite a large margin. So we <clears throat> think that instead we should have been concentrating on Tevin, Delphi, and Eve. We asked about what newspapers magazines do we read, and we found out that Forbes is an untapped source. The majority of you read Forbes. We, I don't think that RGSL has considered advertising Forbes, but I think we definitely should. And uh, lastly, it's not important. Basically, the thing is that we need to appeal to the right target group. We identified the problem, we compared the last um, RGSL campaign, we found that there is a big issue. So let the hand begin for the target group. Here is a decision list. Why students who are today among us have chosen RGSL as the university where to receive the bachelor's degree diploma? And they are <coughs> English studies, international atmosphere, good reputation. After entering university and studying the first months, new, opi uh, new opinions like uh, unique programs in Latvia, supportive student association, and um, uh, virtuous lectures has arised. So we believe that these decisions really might be stable and persuasive information for newcomers. Yes, and we also believe that that should be the marketing message. <coughs> yes, because that is something that this school is uh, proud about. And not everyone has all of these marketing messages, so we think that we should definitely, in, in the, when we look at the, the next students, we should definitely uh, tell us, uh, inform them about, uh, about these, these, the, uh, these points. <coughs> actually appeal uh, to the prospective students and uh, we thought screw classic advertising but instead of talking let's get down to business and uh, show you how it's done now imagine imagine if uh, if 10 20 people had had the same t-shirts not quite like these t-shirts, but maybe t-shirts or hoodies like this one, okay? No, yes. no, these are better. These are better. And, uh, well, imagine if these 10, 20 people just arrived at, at one, at, at the same place at once. It could be a marathon, it could be a, a random uh, event at, at Riga, it could be a, a, a bar at night. Because yes, people like us, and we aren't the most stupid people, we go to places like that. And that might be a place where if we find 5% of intelligent people, well that's enough, right? And, uh, and after the 5th or the 10th t-shirt or hoodie, people just will start wondering, even if they don't know what that means, especially if they don't know what that means, what does that actually mean? Erga SL? Hmm, I'm interested. Well, and then they will come and ask you what that actually means. 
Um, now, next thing, social media. Exactly. We also think that we need to have a better presence in social networks, but instead of advertising, we just need them to show what we're doing, like we did um, when we posted a picture of what we had to do when we were late for these marketing lectures. Uh, I'm really proud that uh, since I took over the presidency of our GSLSI Twitter account, our follower account has grown by staggering 32%, and that is uh, in less than a month. Um, so we will provide a few alternatives to the classic marketing strategies. And so instead of advertising, we're showing. So the first alternative is virtual tour. Also can can be called a 360 degrees tour. So why does yourself needs it? For example, not all students can come to open day or shadow day, but if RGSL will have this virtual tour, every student can enter our web website and see what RGSL digital building have in inside. <coughs> the second alternative is online broadcasting. So we suggest that special events, for example, like invited lecturers or special professors or different kinds of opportunities should have been broadcasted online. And we suggest also that today's event should have been posted online. And um, another thing we could do is we could start a legal clinic um, where basically the students, we get a practice of helping people in legal cases. Other students might have a problem starting a firm or, or anything else. And we could also, in such a way, cooperate with professionals. In case somebody comes with us with a real problem and can't help them, we could go to our partners and tell them, well, you guys take this over. And later on, give us some um, spaces to work at. Um, and uh, the best thing about this is that, sorry about that, the client costs currently for legal consultation in Latvia are about 40 lats per hour. At pre-graduate school of law, we would provide the same service, well, slightly less uh, quality, but slightly less quality for free. And as we all know, people love free stuff. I mean, who doesn't, right? Right. And instead of just say, uh, promoting this by showing t-shirts with RGSL, we thought maybe we could take a step further and make t-shirts with maybe uh, just had a car crash or Marriage didn't work out, <laughs> and if you can't pay those 40 lats per hour, well, we are happy to, to look that information up in, the, in, the, in constitutional law and uh, in the books. <laughs> now, and this would be our, our new message, the pursuit of happiness at RGSL. Isn't that what everyone is looking for? The pursuit of happiness. And RGSL actually and thanks to the Student Association and our dear president, we, we, we can do almost everything. And, uh, and, well, I guess most of you didn't know that but until you got here. But that is because of, uh, of, of the fact that we do not have many students. And uh, we have a very enthousi enthusiastic students and enthusiastic and forthcoming student association. And if you have ideas about anything you can do then so basically um, um first of all quickly why do we need to change this again back to the geeky survey just a couple of sentences don't like the motto of dare to dream uh slogan dare to dream is awful please don't make the school look like a supermarket and many many more you guys yourselves think that our current slogan is crap so we should really work on it so we want to uh, focus your attention on uh, for example another message for Start our RGSL band and you know, promote ourselves in this way. And now we have prepared something for you. That's not the one. We wrote a song actually.
total timing so very well timed uh, performance so questions and discussions and agreements disagreements who were uh, from the oh, so you were first you were first so yeah. Yeah. Like, first of all thank you for the presentation beautiful song I think um, uh, the budget uh, yeah, yeah. there's no budget it's free yeah we no, no no no, no. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm sorry Forbes is not gonna be like hey yeah yeah we, we would like to advertise you on our on our on our yeah, we can cost money Cause all the other, all the other places yeah, were asking right. There's another approach. We need to get Forbes talking about us. So we need to appeal to them in some way. So they'll be interested in writing about articles which are not advertisements. So you're going to appeal to Forbes magazine? We might. We might send them a paper about the legal clinical lobby. I think that's a pretty good idea that they might just write about. So advertising for free. Okay. They won't do it for free. You think so? Yeah. It's, I think it's, it's quite a good idea that hasn't yet been done in Latvia. Yeah, they just agree. Like, Okay. Okay. So put another question. And another thing was about the online lectures and stuff. And as we're studying law, this is against the privacy of the person. I wouldn't allow myself to be on the internet. If the lecturer agrees, it's not against the privacy at all. But you can also well, it's not for every lecture. It's only for special lectures like today. Mm. Um, so it, there, I think there could be an arrangement made because there are lots of universities in the United States. Okay. Another one question. Uh, here, here, here we have the question. No. No, no, okay. So. <laughs> Online courses. We, we we actually thought about that, and we thought whether we wanted to 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 you know uh, show all the courses online and give you the possibility maybe to download them. Uh, of course, but only uh, only with authorization if you sign in with your uh, with your ID. But we thought we could make public live streaming if we had uh, if we had um, people like Robert Stevens who should have come but he didn't. Or, or maybe the upwards and uh, and like you, special lectures, you know, and special seminars. They could be streamed online, and in in that way we would show <coughs> an art yourself uh, from really a bright light. But it, it, it goes into a personal approach. Well, still, you get to see how it, we do it inside. Um, there's one thing you can tell all professional lecturers, good quality lecturers, but it's another thing you can actually see for yourself how they do it. If we see, um, I think this lecture or call this lecture or others, uh, people will change their opinion about how it's really done. Because people are, you can say, um, every single university can involve and say, yes, we have good quality teachers. Because quality is such a hard thing to measure. So that's how we show them that we actually do have good teachers. Wow. Uh, relevant comments, relevant answer. Another one question? And about this legal consultations, I mean, we're only first year and second year students. 
in every person can actually look into constitution. The thing about the laws is how to interpret them correctly. And I don't think that we're capable of doing this right now. But the good thing about so university is that we also have masters and PhD programs. They won't do it for So aren't I you mean, aren't you able to I think we have quite smart to do it. Yes, it's not it's not individual, you know. We could we could make Get we more people get together. A session, get a session of people, just one night of brainstorm. And getting people in a room, uh, trying to answer this uh, question. Okay. So, another one question. Talking about the masters, how much do they participate now? Mm -hmm. Not yet, not at all, almost. So but the, because, because student association they doesn't appeal to them. Yeah. They don't want to do parties, they don't want to do anything else. Legal clinic might be something down their alley that exactly. yes. they might want to join. We seem too young for them, we seem too party like. So this is the thing, so we hope we also reach Master's students. Yeah, okay. Masters are not even participating in the legal stuff we're doing now. Yeah, so they won't do them. this for free, this is especially serious. doctors. Well, some masters all need some practice as well. They can put in their CV that they work in a legal clinic. Because um, I posted on a Twitter account recently an article about law universities worldwide. Uh, law firms hate it that they teach only theory. A student graduates and he comes out and he doesn't know how to file a single lawsuit. Uh, that's why we need to work uh, hands-on law in Latvia. We need to gain some reputation as people who can help. And maybe you will make lifelong contacts in this legal clinic. It's it's uh, it's easy, uh, clearly not easy thing to do. It's not easy thing, but once once the team or once the tool would, 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 would succeed in this, I think this this would be worth thing to at least to try to. And I think that for uh, for uh, for legal offices uh, to have uh, uh, have it written in your CV that you have been active, for example, in a legal clinic. Once I were a lawyer, a lawyer uh, and uh, I mean, if I were looking for Valuable, valuable new candidates or students to start to work in my, my practice. I think I would consider this as an advantage. So the last one question, if you have any. is what made you read Forbes, uh, you read Forbes before you came here. Well, it, yeah, it, didn't pub it wasn't published that yet then, but still. Uh, we think that people who come to RGSL are more like us, so we need to appeal to people which are like us. Oh, okay. Well, actually, I, I was influenced by people here who did read Forbes before I did, even if I had the period in between. Yeah. Um, well, Forbes is also a brand new uh, magazine, so... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think both arguments are valid, so thank you for your discussions and opinion. Uh, thank you for being here.